Hi, this is Shannon from SIS4Teachers.org. Thanks so much for joining us today on our tutorial video on how to make visual models in a developmentally appropriate way for first graders. We're going to be talking about a problem that we have the label PWS. What that stands for is we're going to model a part whole subtraction problem in a really great developmental way with a scaffolded journal using visual models to help students with comprehending a story problem. We're going to show this in a proportional way on this particular uh, journal template, but in our journal for first grade, we eventually will transition into a journal that has a non-proportional look to it. As you can see, this bar doesn't really have any of the proportional pieces in it. We like by the end of first grade for students to be ready to use their visual models in a non-proportioned bar to be able to understand what the problem is asking. And this model will mainly show it on the proportional way to show a scaffold that will bring in that non-proportional way to give you an idea. We're going to look at what our step-by-step -step visual models say in our checklist when we're doing word problems. We want students to have a consistent way in grades first all the way up through fifth is how we look at problems. For first grade, we have seven steps. The first step says to read the entire problem and put in the chunks. We'd like you to read the problem out loud, and then we're going to kind of carefully look at the problems to find different mathematical chunks of information that we can point out. So if we look at the story problem that we're focusing on today, it has to do with something with a baseball. Connor had eight baseballs. He gave Jack three of his baseballs. How many baseballs does Connor have left? That's kind of the first reading of the problem. We then would want to go a little bit slower and have students repeat the different information and kind of stop when you hear mathematical information. So Connor had eight baseballs. There's definitely some information in there. You're going to have your students repeat back, Connor had eight baseballs. The kids love saying chunk, which they kind of put a line in here because it's telling us that there's a new piece of mathematical information that we want to add on to our visual model. The next section says he gave Jack three of his baseballs. Repeat, so students are going to repeat that statement and then put in the chunk. How many baseballs? does Connor have left? The kids will repeat it, and then we have a chunk. In this story problem, we have three chunks of information that we want to put on to our visual model. Remember, the visual model is not necessarily solving the problem, but it's a reading comprehension strategy to transfer this information into a drawing. In first grade, this might seem kind of simple, but as the problems get harder, you know, Connor might have 88 baseballs and have given away 32 of them, and so these can become more complex. So let's go back to our step-by-step -step checklist and put a check on that we have our first problem, uh, our step done, where we've read the entire problem, we've put in chunks. Step two in our visual model process is to rewrite the question in sentence form with a blank space for the answer. Oftentimes kids want to rush into, do we add, do we subtract? We want to slow this process down because we're not going to start talking about computation until step six. So let's go back to our journal and take a look. We have on our scaffolded part here a sentence form that really is filled out for first graders. Throughout the school year, you might start to leave other blanks to see our children really taking a look at what this question is asking and getting into the story to see what the, it's, it's asking us to solve. How many baseballs does Connor have left? So this reads, Connor has hmm, baseballs left. Uh -huh means we don't know. That's what we're solving for. So in that sentence form, it's left off here. So we're really positive on what we're solving for. If we go back to our checklist, we know that we've done this part of it correctly by rewriting it. It's really important for students to pay attention to this visual model checklist as you're teaching this throughout the first grade year. Our next sentence says, let's determine the who or the what is involved in the problem. So let's go back to our story model here that we're looking at. This is really talking about Connor's baseballs. Yes, Jack is involved in the problem, which we're going to add in a little bit later, but the who or the what is going to be the left of our unit bar that we're creating here. Again, over throughout the school year, we can kind of leave this part off or put in maybe baseballs and have the child put in the who, but at the beginning of the way our journal is designed is to kind of help set students up for success. So we can go back to our checklist and we know that step three is taken care of. We have the who or the what that's involved. 
When we move over to step four, drawing the unit bar, in this case, we're gonna kind of show it in both ways. So if we look back at our journal template here, the unit bar that we have here is actually considered proportional. Yes, it does match the exact numbers and a kid could quickly fill this out, but the whole point of this is really to get the model of what the words are saying here. When we look at the other way, it's a unit bar that is drawn that students are gonna to have to do towards the end of first grade and second through fifth, where they're gonna to have to fill out the information on this non-proportional unit bar on their own. So we go back to our checklist and we know that this unit bar is already here. So I'm gonna go ahead to our checklist and I'm going to put a check next to the unit bar being drawn. Step five is a big step. It's going back and looking at those chunks that we had in the problem, make sure we're transferring the information onto the unit bar. And of course we wanna put in a question mark. We're gonna look back at this journal template and really talk about how we're going to add this information in. So Connor has eight baseballs. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use a circle to put in my baseball. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My total unit bar is worth eight because it demonstrates that Connor had eight baseballs. I go back in the chunk and put a check because I know I've added that information in here. Training kids to go back to the chunks and put it in really helps them slow down. The point of problem solving is not just the computation, it's this other part of it. He gave Jack three of his baseballs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a diagonal slash through these, through, th through these three indicating that these three belong to Jack. So I did in fact take away the three, but I need to indicate in this bracket what this is talking about. We want this drawing that we're creating to be able to be created a story problem from just looking at the model without the words here. So above, I'm gonna go ahead and put Jack. Students certainly could just put J for Jack, but I'm gonna go ahead and write that and put the check on my three. The question mark is asking, how many does he have left? So this bracket needs to have a label which is indicating the baseballs that Connor has left. So here we have the ones he has left and it wants to know how many. In the scaffolded journal, we have a line here for students to go ahead and write their question mark in so they can see it, but the idea here is to get them to see that that's the question. We don't want the answer here. We don't want a, you know the five written here. We want them to really think this process out and then go ahead and put the check. We had our three chunks, we have our three checks. If we just kind of looked at this for later in the year when students would be ready for a part whole subtraction problem like this on a non-proportional bar, we would do the same process, this total bar equals eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put eight. We're not gonna write the individual pieces in here, but we know that represents the eight. We know that Jack took three of them. So approximately this many might be for Jack. So I'm gonna write Jack at the top because he was given three of the balls. This box here represents how many is left. When we do the non-proportional bar here, we can go ahead and put the question mark in. So again, if students are a little bit further on in the year, you can scaffold to this non-proportional bar. We're gonna continue the process using this proportional bar that we've been using here so that we can get the idea of what that looks like. So let's look at our checklist again. That step five is a really big one where kids are gonna need assistance, but we wanna get it to the point where first graders can do that independently. So we're gonna check that off. Now it's time to solve. It's time to do the computation to correctly compute and solve the problem. On these scaffolded mats, of course, kids can, kids can just look up and tell us the answer. But when we head back over to the journal here, we wanna look at what computation is sort of happening. So maybe the child wants to do a number bond to kind of show what's happening. They might want to do a number sentence that says Connor started off with eight baseballs. He gave three away to his friend Jack and he's left over with five. Students might also do a number bond showing the total and that he had the part that he gave to his friend and the part that he has left. Kids could also draw a picture of this if you wanted to, to show that pictorially, but the computation is just really seeing that they understand the process that kids are going through in this. As kids are learning part whole subtraction, maybe it's part whole addition or part whole missing add-in, you wanna teach them in a certain way, but then also mix it up so that kids aren't always just going, oh, I just subtract.
Now that we have the computation done, we can go ahead on our checklist and look at number six, how it says correctly compute, and we can check that off as well. Our last part is that sentence form that we created at the beginning to make sure we're answering the problem properly. We can go in and write the answer in the sentence and make sure it makes sense. So over here it says Connor has hmm, baseballs left. We've shown here that, that he has five baseballs left. So that can go inside of the answer here. Remember, this isn't just a spot for kids to draw the picture and to solve on. It really has to look at what the question is asking. So as we look at these journals, we have lots of different videos that you can check out on our YouTube channel that has an example for first grade for part whole subtraction, part whole missing add-in, part whole addition, and we'll also do additive comparison on there. You might wanna look also at our Math for Little publications that would come before this in kindergarten to scaffold with quick draws before we're gonna to come to this point. So I'm gonna go back to that checklist one last time and have successfully completed all seven steps to our step-by-step -step visual models for word problems. We're so excited that you joined us today and hope that you'll check us out on our website at sis4teachers.org. We also have lots of great things on our social media channels from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or LinkedIn. It's all at the same handle at sis4teachers. Thank you.